Welcome, welcome everybody to the live stream. This is the first one we've done so far. Um, we've got about to go through the offseason with our Kansas Jayhawks dynasty. You guys can come and go as you want, but this is going to be a great time. Um, as you can see, we finished off 5-7, and seven, a little worse than what we wanted to do um, in our first year, but um, it's not as bad as it could have been. Um, we did get a couple of nice wins there throughout the season. As you guys know, we had a couple of tough losses. Um, games like Oklahoma and Iowa State, we were in both of those games. Just the last second, we couldn't pull off the win. Um, you know, it would have been great to get a win against Oklahoma. Obviously, we didn't end up being able to pull through. But going back through the season, games like uh, Charlotte Week 1 where we lost... 24-30, that's a, just a tough game to swallow considering if we win that game, we're in a bowl game now. Um, FCS Midwest, obviously, that's probably my favorite moment of the season. Uh, if you guys remember that game, Gavin Potter hit, had the pick six in overtime to win that one. That one was a great time. Um, then, of course, we went to Rice. We beat them by just two uh, tough games the first few games. I believe the game against Rice is the first game Jason Bean started. I'm not exactly sure, but I know he came in late against FCS Midwest, and then I know I'm pretty sure he started against Rice. Let's make sure that's correct. Uh, yeah, he was. this is the first game he started. He had 225, a touchdown, a pick. Um, obviously, he's done much better than we expected him to do at, when he came in uh, for Jalen Daniels. Louisiana Tech, once again, they finished 4-8, and eight, and um, just a tough loss there because, uh, once, once again, like I said, if we had beat either Charlotte or Louisiana Tech, that's an easy bowl game right there. Uh, we could have easily had seven wins this year, and then you go over here, you go to a game like Texas Tech where they finished a respectable 8-5, and five, but... I mean, you shouldn't be losing 62-28 to 28 against Texas Tech. TCU, we lost by three. Um, I believe this game, our offense had a total of like four yards, it seemed like. Um, we just couldn't get anything going. And if we had just been able to get something going, yeah, Jason Bean struggled. Um, only a 36% completion percentage throughout that game. Um, if we had just been able to get anything going in this game... We would have been able to uh, get the win there. What's up, College Football Talk? Great to see you in here. Um, we're just getting started going through the season. Um, here we are, Oklahoma. This was probably the biggest upset we had all season long. And not upset as in we upset them. Upset as in we lost to them when we should have won. I mean, 42-35 to 35 against, obviously, Oklahoma ended up winning the national championship this year. So... It would have been really nice to be able to knock them down from the natty. So, I mean, what are you going to do about that? Then we had Texas. We actually did end up beating Texas. Um, they obviously weren't as good as they expected to be. They only finished 5-7, and seven, missed a bowl game. Oklahoma State upset them. I believe at this point when we played them, they were top three in the nation. Maybe top five. I could be getting that mixed up, but I'm pretty sure they were top five when we played them. So uh, it's kind of interesting to see how they fell off once we played them because they were they were in the national championship talk uh, when they when we played them that week. And we had a uh, West Virginia. We lost to them. So many games we had this season. This game against Iowa State lost by seven. Uh, BYU barely won that one. They finished one and eleven their first season in the um, Big Twelve. So that's a tough start for them this in the new conference obviously they've never been in a conference before welcome everybody that's coming into the live stream um but so many opportunities this year to just make a bowl game and team couldn't come through but that's all right that's what the off season's for we gotta get better we gotta uh hopefully come back next year and at least make a bowl game is what i'm looking for um i figure we'll go ahead and look and uh, just see who ended up winning all these bowl games because as you know, there's a lot of them. I think we had a good bit of Big 12 in bowl games. Let's see what they had. We had a couple of interesting ones that I wanted to look at. Appalachian State actually finished 10-3 and this year. They were able to play Syracuse who 
technically I think was ranked above them, but obviously not as much talent on their roster. So they, they gave them a pretty good beat down. You got a matchup like Cincinnati against a very bad Oregon State team. Um, just the disrespect there, 11 and two Cincinnati dominates Oregon State 45-28. Yeah, Nebraska against a pretty bad Baylor team, so that's interesting to see. 41-13, Nebraska was 10 and three. Baylor was only seven and six. Uh, I'm not really sure how those two teams ended up matching up in that bowl game. Um, UCF can't claim the championship this year. I hate to break it to you. Um, nothing too interesting down here. Ohio State eases one by against Auburn. Auburn was six and seven this year. Um, Ohio State nine and four. Both of these teams just didn't end up being as good as they were hoping to be this year. Um, you got Michigan State against Army. Here's the real more interesting ones. You had Texas A&M against a very good Michigan team, and they beat them handily by 17. Um, Indiana and Georgia. Indiana puts a whooping on Georgia. 38-7. I don't think anybody saw that coming from a mile away. Let's see what these stats are. I'm, I'm surprised that Georgia didn't really put up much of a fight. Michael Penix... 25 for 43, 320 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception against that mighty Georgia defense. They had about they had two rushing touchdowns as well from their starting running back. And that's crazy to see. JT Daniels, 58 yards and an interception, only 40% completion percentage. Um, their running back had their only touchdown of the entire game. That's a crazy upset there. Um, Indiana finishing with 11 wins instead of 10. That's a big season for them. Um, obviously, I think it would have been technically last year where they were in the, um, the COVID season. and they, they had a pretty decent season last year. We have Wisconsin and Miami. Wisconsin takes the win there. Iowa State dominates Memphis. A kind of a... Interesting matchup. I wonder how many times those teams have actually matched up in history. 45-19, though. Brees Hall, did he play? I imagine he did. 22-123 and three touchdowns. We got to get a guy like Brees Hall on this team. Let me know who you guys think uh, is the best running back right now in college football. I'm just curious who everybody thinks it is. I don't think Brees Hall... I don't know the statistics too well, but I don't think Brees Hall had as great of a season as people expected him to do. Um, I know Brian Robinson had a real good season for the Tide, um, so I'm interested to see what your guys' opinions on that are. Um, here we had a interesting Utah Ole Miss matchup where Utah takes it home by 18. Alabama, 10-3, and three, they inched into a bowl game. 28-7, easy win over Oklahoma State. You got Clemson, just like real life, I guess they're underachieving. Florida hit them hard in this game, 30 to seven. Um, yeah, I agree. Brian Robinson is probably the best running back right now. Uh, it's kind of funny to hear that he sat behind so many running backs at Alabama for so long. Um, and uh, we got Houston Buffalo made a pretty big bowl game there. That's interesting to see getting down here towards the end we had the national championship game and this game's a little crazy to look at if you guys want to see the scoreboard because at one point usc was up 27 to nothing look they scored the first four touchdowns only missed one extra point and oklahoma comes back and scores all 31 unanswered i believe yeah they had 27 unanswered because uh, USC ends up hitting a field goal in the third quarter. So Oklahoma's able to make the comeback. They're able to get a big win in the championship game. Obviously, Spencer Rattler didn't transfer like he had did in real life, and Caleb Williams probably isn't going to get a chance to play for a few more seasons. Uh, but he had a big game here, 20 of 34, 300 yards, three touchdowns, an interception, rushing wise 15 of 13 and another touchdown so four total touchdowns over there for spencer rattler big game from him um kadan slovis 
16 of 30, 273, a touchdown and interception. So USC played decent. It's just they weren't able to play for the entire game, it looks like. Um, kind of mad that Oklahoma was able to win the championship and we couldn't knock them out of that. But as far as the Heisman goes, this one's a little even more surprising. Sam Howell out of North Carolina takes home the Heisman. That would have never happened in real life. Um, he obviously had a much better season this year than he did last year, or than he did in real life. But um, he ended with 36 touchdowns, only four interceptions, so that's that's very efficient there. He had 179 rushing attempts for 604 yards, added seven touchdowns on the ground. So uh, overall, he had over 40 total touchdowns. That's a it's definitely Heisman worthy. Um, behind him, obviously, we had Brees Hall. Uh, Damian Pierce out of Florida, the senior running back. He was a surprise to see. And then uh, Brad Roberts out of Air Force Academy. I've never heard of this guy, but apparently he's really good. He was fourth in the Heisman Trophy voting, and especially coming from a Power 5 conference, that's pretty big. Zamir White, a running back out of Georgia. You know he's going to be in the Heisman contention no matter what the year is. Had a tough game against Indiana like we just saw. What are you going to do? Finishing fifth is still finishing in the race. So, I mean, that's really all that matters. Um, and before we start to simulate, let's go ahead and get into... We'll go into our season stats and see how everybody ended up doing this year. Obviously, Jason Bean, junior quarterback. He didn't start the year out, but he ended up being the starter from week three on. Um... Finished with 171 for 318. He had 2,769 passing yards, 20 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, um, average 251 per game. He was overall pretty good. I mean, he'll most likely come back next year and win the starting job as you see Jalen Daniels, 37 of 67, 472, two touchdowns, and six interceptions. So he started those first two games really struggled to get the offense going at all we probably could have won those games if we have jason bean in there um, but it's all right at this point um he's still a sophomore though he's got time to improve i'm interested to see how much he develops and you guys let me know or go ahead and give your early predictions who you guys think will be the starting quarterback next season because both of these guys are most likely going to be on the team um still you're doing a Temple rebuild. Yeah, Temple seems like a fun team to uh, rebuild right now. I remember, I think they had Matt Rule a few years ago. They were pretty good offensively with uh, P.J. Walker and all of them. Um, but uh, I think they're, they'll be a fun team to rebuild. Uh, so let me know how that ends up going. Belton Garner had the one pass attempt this season. We're going to probably next year, if we get in those big situations where we need a big play, I say why not try the trick play um, it's something that nobody expects to come and Velton Garner himself had a decent season 254 rushing yards went for a little over a thousand uh, or 254 rushing attempts went for a little over a thousand 1377 about five yards a carry uh, 14 touchdowns his longest was 74 and he averaged around 115 a game so he did about as good as you could expect him to Devin Neal a freshman I'm really excited to see how he can develop going into next season 27 of 82 he had four touchdowns his only, longest run was only 27 yards but he was the backup so he came in only when we needed him to year one four and three so far college football talk that's a not a bad start though um could definitely make the bowl game or a bowl game in your first year if you're able to get two more wins um, who do you guys play in the next couple games? I'm interested to see if you know that. Um, just let me know. Uh, receiving wise, Mason Fairchild undoubtedly was our best receiver overall when it came to velocity. But yards wise, it had to be Luke Grimm. Luke Grimm always seemed to be there whenever we needed a guy to get a big catch. He had 38 receptions. 811 yards five touchdowns he had that big 65 yard catch and run i just hit b for whatever reason had that big 65 yard catch and run late in that game against iowa state i believe 
Um, so that was a lot of fun to see. Yeah, Cincinnati is going to be a tough game to win. Uh, especially, they usually run that area of the country right there besides Ohio State. Um, so that's going to be a tough matchup right there. Uh, let me know how that ends up going for you when you play that game. Um, Trevor Wilson had a fairly good season sophomore year. He'll be back next year. He had six touchdowns. I believe that's the most on the team. Um, yeah, that's the most of any player. Kwame Lasseter, very disappointed in how he played. Senior year, you think he'd go out with the bang. 38 receptions, 724 yards, four touchdowns. I just struggled to find him in the offense. Obviously, talent-wise, he was undoubtedly our best receiver. But uh, Luke Grimm and guys like Trevor Wilson, um, even Stephen McBride got open more than... Kwame Lasseter when they were on the field. Stephen McBride's a sophomore, and with Kwame Lasseter leaving, I expect him to step up big time next year. He only had 18 receptions for a little under 400 yards, two touchdowns, so it wasn't anything crazy, but I think he'll be able to come into the offense pretty easily next year and make a big impact. Um, down here, you get into the guys that only played a few times. Um, obviously, we've got Will Huggins, Trevor Cardell, and um, Mason Fairchild all coming back next year. They're going to be a big tight end uh, room for us next year. They're probably going to be a big part of the offense. Um, Lawrence Arnold, also freshman redshirted receiver. Three for 31 and a touchdown. So hopefully he can develop just a little bit. And we have Ben Miles coming back at the fullback. No, he'll graduate at the end of this season. So blocking wise, don't really care about that too much. Defensively, Kenny Logan Jr. led the team with 83 tackles. 78 of those were solo. That's very impressive. He had three tackles for loss, only one sack and inter one interception. So we could have been a little bit more aggressive on the turnover front. Same goes for Ricky Thomas Jr. Um, he'll be gone next year, unfortunately. He was great for us. 78 tackles. Um, he ended up having eight tackles for loss and one interception. Gavin Potter dominated this defense he was the leader we needed he's a junior so i'm hoping he doesn't get drafted um 72 tackles six assisted tackles 15 tpls or tfls i don't know why i said tpls and four sacks he did have that big pick six to win the game in overtime against fcs midwest and other than that it was just a pretty well-rounded defensive effort jeremy webb was good this year he'll be gone um, guys like Jay Deneen will be gone. Kieran Johnson and Nate Betts will both be graduating, so that's going to be a big hit to the defense there. Kieran Johnson actually in that final game of the season broke the record for most sacks in a, in a um, season at Kansas. Uh, great to see him succeed like that. Kicking-wise, we had Jacob Borsia, 8 of 18. I'm going to be honest, that's all me. I'm a terrible when it comes to kicking. He was only 95% um, for extra points, but then about 44% when it came to kicking field goals. His longest was only 37. You guys got to give me some advice, though, how to kick better in this game because for whatever reason, I just can't get the hang of it. I've never been able to do it well. Reese Vernon punted as good as you could expect a punter to. Kwame Lasseter did decent returning wise only the one touchdown which was unfortunate and then he also got a touchdown on one punt return so overall first year five and seven I love to see us succeed more than we were expected to I think we ended up finishing probably around the eighth spot in the conference yeah we were ninth right behind West Virginia we beat them, obviously. We jumped them. Welcome, everybody. The The viewers just jumped up a little bit, so welcome, everybody, into the live stream. Um, you feel more than welcome to say hey in the comments if you'd like. Um, we finished ninth in the conference. Definitely better than last because BYU was terrible. Texas was below us. Obviously, Oklahoma, Ohio, and Iowa State finished top two, so... Not much we could have done there to jump any of the rankings. Clemson atop the ACC. We'll just go through a couple of the conferences. Uh, Big Ten had Wisconsin on top. That was uh, interesting to see Ohio State and Michigan fall. 
The CUSA saw Texas San Antonio finish number one in their conference with a 10-4 record, 9-0 in conference. That's a pretty nice thing to see when you're a small school like that. I think they almost went undefeated in real life this year. I think they maybe lost one or two games. Um, so, almost mirrored real life. Central Michigan took the map. Um, and we'll go over to the Mountain West Conference where San Jose State took the trophy there. Interested to see Nick Starkle. If you guys remember him, let me know if you do. He was at Texas A&M, I believe. And he struggled a little bit there, but he comes in at San Jose State and dominates. Over 4,000 yards, 31 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. That's a, that's a heck of a season by a quarterback like that. Um, especially after he basically got kicked out of the SEC. Um, Pac-12, got USC, Utah. Oregon is way down here. They went 5-5 five and five in the conference. Um, so that's a disappointing season for them. I hope none of you guys are Oregon fans. Um, SEC, Florida, Georgia, Ole Miss, Texas A&M. The usuals besides Alabama. And as far as the final conference, the Sun Belt, we had Georgia State take the conference championship there. So overall, not too surprising of a season. Nobody went crazy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and simulate to the offseason and Let's get this underway. A lot of recruiting battles. We've got Maurice Butler and Dante Chavez in a recruiting battle for them. Um, we had a couple guys win awards this year. Gavin Potter won the award for best linebacker, I believe. So, first year we finished five and seven. A great way to finish our first season. Um, I don't plan on leaving Kansas, obviously, but coaching carousel, I just want to see if any interesting jobs opened up um you see let's see who we got here penn state had james franklin fired after failing to meet goals they finished five and seven um let's go ahead and see next coach who do they end up hiring they are contacting going around going around and they hire san jose state coach brent brennan just went 11 and 3 at San Jose State. Let me know if that's a good hire, y'all. I don't know how I feel about that one. He went 11 and 3 at San Jose State. Man, I just don't know how they went that deep down. I guess he's he had a good season, so he's gonna come up and be better for Penn State this year. David Shaw had his contract expire at Stanford. Um, yeah, they just extend his. Sam Pittman. Unlike real life, where he turned the Arkansas Razorbacks around to a top team in the country, they finished five and seven and fire him after one year. And let's see who they go after here. I'd be surprised if they don't try to get uh, Luke Fickle from Cincinnati. Let's see, Butch Davis is over there. Please don't, please don't hire Butch Davis. And they bring Gus Malzahn back to the SEC. That's got to be a bad hire there. Auburn had him for the longest. Never really did too much besides that one good season. Yeah, Arkansas, I'm going to have to say y'all took an L on that one. Georgia Tech, we've got them in here hiring a new head coach. They take Luke Fickle from Cincinnati. How do y'all feel about that one? Luke Fickle, I think Cincinnati is low-key a better situation than Georgia Tech. It's been a while since Georgia Tech's been really good see if we can see their previous records obviously this this is way back in 2013 but even then their last really good season was 2009 other than that they've always been average and in real life with their roster they've been pretty bad the last few years um california the golden bears they are gonna take jeff trailer from utsa we'll just go through a few more teams i do want to see now um, who Luke Fickle is going to be replaced by. Let's see. I'm going to take a guess and say it's going to be Butch Davis from FIU. You guys remember him. He was the previous Tennessee coach. No, they actually end up taking Alex Grinch, head coach hired from Oklahoma. He was their defensive coordinator. 13-0. Last year, they won the championship, so... 
Hey, he finally gets his chance to take the uh, take the reins on a team. Iowa looking at their head coach position. Mike Tressel, defensive coordinator from Cincinnati. And Cincinnati is just getting absolutely demolished. And we'll just go ahead and go to the end of the carousel now. See if anything else too crazy happens. I know this may not be the most interesting part of the offseason, but I like to see where everybody ends up going. Um, it's, it's actually pretty interesting to watch in real life. Uh, let me know, everybody, comment who's in the stream right now, who your favorite team is in college football. In the NFL, I don't really care which. Um, they're both pretty, pretty fun to watch. I do prefer college over the NFL. But let's see. Let's go through the teams down here. A lot of teams losing their coaches. Um, anything too interesting? Uh, let's see. They Vanderbilt keeps Clark Leah after a four and eight season. San Jose State brings in Brent Venables. Ah oh, man, that's man, that's crazy. Leaves for Oklahoma in real life, and I know I got a few Clemson fans in my chat, and I know y'all are gonna hate that. He leaves for Oklahoma in real life, and then in a simulation, he leaves for San Jose State. Uh, that's a that's a downgrade for sure. Um, let's see anything too interesting. I just see Todd Grantham leaves Florida. He was fired in real life, I believe. He leaves for Louisiana, who had a 7-6 and six year. Um, they also lose their offensive coordinator, so that's a tough soft season for Florida. James Franklin ends up going to Mid-Tennessee State. 5-7 and seven with Penn State last year. 2-10 and ten for Mid-Tennessee, so they're hoping he can come from the Power 5 and make them a little bit better than they have been. Then we go down here. Nothing too crazy. Just a bunch of extensions, extensions. Uh, Alabama brings in a new coordinator. So, uh, yeah, let's see who Clemson hired, though, for that defensive coordinator position. Okay. They brought in the D.C. from Texas A&M. They've had a pretty good defense um, consistently. So, uh, that's not a... I wouldn't say that's a crazy downgrade. It's still pretty bad. But um, let's go ahead and advance to see who all is leaving us this offseason. Uh, this is probably going to hit us pretty hard if we can't get a nice recruiting class. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not the best when it comes to recruiting in this game. Hopefully I'll be able to pull something a little crazy off. Um, but coaching changes, we just saw all that. Players leaving, let's see. Jalen Daniels is going to transfer along with Stephen McBride. Ah, that's going to be a tough, tough hit to our offense. Man, I was really counting on Stephen McBride next year. I understand playing time for Jalen Daniels, but Stephen McBride, he knew that there were guys in front of him, and he was going to get a chance to be a star next year. Man, and all these guys are just graduating. Ben Miles, Ricky Thomas Jr., Malcolm Lee. Our defensive line is going to be hammered with graduations. Miles Kendrick, I almost feel bad for. He didn't even see um, the field a single season. Really wish we could be able to convince these guys to come back. We can try to persuade them, but I don't know. You're going to play. He's going to stay. Let's go. We got him to stay. We got Stephen McBride to stay. Let's see if we can get Jalen Daniels to stay. I don't know if I want to promise he's going to pass 200 times. I just don't know if he brings that starting job in, but we'll try. And he is unsure. He is unsure to stay, and I think we're going to let Steven or Jalen Daniels go. Let me know if that's a W or an L, bringing back Steven McBride. I wanted to fight for him. I think we're going to let Jalen Daniels go. We've got Jason Bean. Um, we've got a few freshman quarterbacks that I redshirted. Uh, yeah, that, it is a big pickup to bring him back. I didn't even know, honestly, that you could argue or try to plead for them to stay. 
but um I think we're gonna let Jalen Daniels go I think that's the right thing to do so I, I let's go ahead and simulate forward and pray I don't really want to play Madden 25 but let's pray that we get somebody to transfer obviously this game came out long before the transfer portal was as massive we have nobody drafted thought maybe Gavin Potter would get drafted uh, but no, no, none of our players got drafted, which is reasonable. Let's see if we get any transfer requests, and no, we don't. That's a bit of an L right there. Um, that's a tough thing to do. You can't really control the transfer portal in this game. It was before um, everything was too popular to just leave in your team like that, so... You just kind of got to hope that the game miraculously gives you a transfer portal player, player if I can speak English. Uh, but still, like we said, getting Stephen McBride to stay is going to be a big thing for us next year, I think. Right now, we've got 17 scholarships remaining. I think we've got one of the worst classes in the country. I'm trying to keep it a little realistic, though. Um, there are some teams underneath us that should be way higher on this list. We've got a... People like Appalachian State or Houston, they should be way up there. Right now we sit around 108. We're up here with teams that are much worse than us. So let's see if we can convince some of these guys to join the Jayhawks um, next year on our roster. Interesting to see. We need to try and get Maurice Butler. 76 overall quarterback already. It's going to be a great great opportunity for us to bring him in over people uh, or over the SEC I was gonna say people like Mississippi State or a team like Mississippi State don't really care for either of these guys so we're gonna put a lot of points into him um, Dante Chavez I don't want to fight for him too much because I feel like the running back room is a little full already so I'm gonna not put a lot of points into him We'll put about 500. Hope that's enough. Donnell Harris obviously was a massive get for us to bring in. Um, didn't really have too much going on for the guard positions. Defensive end, we did end up losing the main guy that we wanted. But Patrick White is going to come in. I think he'll be pretty solid for us. So no reason to uh, be too worried there. We'll go over here and we'll just go through all the positions and see who the most important players are. I know there's a few athletes we have, um, like Antonio Griffin. I would love to bring him in. That would be a massive get for us. I don't think we really have much of a chance, but uh, what's up, Nathan? Welcome to the stream. Don't think we really have much of a chance to bring him in, but I'm going to put about 2,000 into these guys for now. We'll probably go back and change it. Um, if anybody anybody just missed that, we were able to convince Stephen McBride to stay for year two. So that's a big get for us if you weren't able to see that. Antonio Griffin and James Smith. We'll put 2,000 in each of them, and then we'll go back and hopefully be able to convince them a little more. Uh, Mark Mitchell as well a 78 overall running back I'll go after him a lot more than a guy like Dante Chavez because he's only a 69 overall so 500 into him is probably enough um, let's see here Maurice Butler will go up with you we're around 7,000 points right now um, we'll go to 2700 I think for him would be appropriate I never know how many points to put into these guys so we're around 9,200 now. This play or this player, we're behind on by 890, and this one we're back by 690. So we got 800 left. So we'll put 400 more into him. Let's see. And then we need to go back down to 400, and let's go over here. Let's give James Smith. 800 or 400 as well and let's go back around and make sure we got everybody that we really want to mark mitchell put 2000 into him but running back's not too big of a worry i might actually take that down a little bit we've got velton gardner coming back we've got devin neal coming back and a freshman red shirt running back that didn't play last year so we should be more than good on that front i might even bring that down to 1500 
I don't think he is a running back out of Alabama, so he'll probably be pretty good, but I don't think that's too much of a worry. And we'll put 3,000 on um, uh, Maurice Butler. And then let's go over here. We're going to have a bit of a small class, so we probably won't have to cut anybody. And let's just go down here now and add a few more points. We've got we can put another hundred on both of these guys. And I'm just praying that they don't all leave to a different team. I need to actually offer scholarships to you. Or offer a scholarship to you. Let's go ahead and offer him that scholarship. That should give us a few more points. Make sure we've offered to all these guys. Um we'll go down here. Where is Mark Mitchell, we should have offered to him already. Yes, we have. And other than that, nothing too crazy. I would have liked to put a little bit into Mike Henderson. Um, it would have been interesting to bring in, but we'll go into next week and see how he's doing. I think they give you three weeks to recruit during the off season, So I should be able... No, next week is signing day. So we need to... Act... I thought they gave you an extra week in the off season. I was wrong. I'm glad I checked that. Let's see. If anybody has any tips for recruiting in the chat, I'd, I'd love them because I really don't know how um, to recruit too well in this game. Let's see if we go down here. And I'd like to offer him a some, some amount. But it looks like he's probably going to be taken away from us by other teams. And we really don't have too much more to offer. I don't want to lose guys like Antonio Griffin and James Smith. And I might even, honestly, we already have Phil Holmes coming in. I'm going to take the 500 away from um, that running back. Let's see if we can find someone else on this board that interests us. That's within a reasonable amount when it comes to how much we're down by. Like a guy like Joel Holland, that'd be a big get for us. So I might end up going and putting some points into him. Yeah, I think we'll go and put those that 500 into Joel Holland. See what happens. Probably nothing too crazy. He's probably got a lot of teams um, already offering into him. So this could be a rough spot here. I'm going to see what's up. When it gets to the signing day, I pray we get some of these players. I'm pretty nervous that we're not going to get any of them. And um, it'd just be a bummer if we're not able to get any of you guys on this team. Um, guys like Maurice Butler. I don't know how much we'll be able to get these two guys, but I'm going to put the 2,000 into them. And yeah, let's go ahead and um, go ahead and advance to the signing day think that's a pretty good amount to, of points to put into everyone i could regret this a lot and uh i'm actually i'm gonna do a little a little bit of a cheeky thing here let's save before we go to the next week that way we can uh you know have a little bit of a save ready just in case we don't get anybody but i, I feel like that's a little cheeky so i may not end up doing that signing day oh come on guys i know you want to come play for head coach memes at kansas we need some of these guys really don't need the running back as much as we put points into him like we did but you take talent where you can get it he might even be able to play at receiver if we really needed him to um, so let's see uh, gotta wait for the simulation to come through all these guys signing. I don't see any Kansas in there. Oh, I just saw one Kansas. So somebody signed with us. Somebody signed with us. We level up. That's a big get. All right. Let's see. We got James Smith. Antonio Griffin leaves. He goes to Penn State. Mark Mitchell goes to Ohio State. We bring in Maurice Butler. That's a huge get there. All right. And uh, this guy down here, I don't know why you even decided to commit. Okay, we picked up a few guys. I'm pretty happy with that. We sign a gym prospect. We get a few talented players. Unfortunately, Antonio Griffin actually left. I believe he was that uh, other 
athlete. So let's see here. We go down. Maurice Butler, we just saw, stays. Kelly Skinner, Skinner out of Connecticut, commits. Dante Chavez, he ends up leaving. I don't blame him. Uh, like I said, we have a lot. Of, we have a running back coming in, and he really wouldn't have had much uh, playing time anyways. Um, let's see who we ended up bringing in other than that. Don't think we got this guy that we put some points into. No, we ended up finishing uh, second, third, yeah, second place on him. Um, nothing here too much. Nate Smith in there at uh, middle linebacker, obviously. And then, yeah, Antonio Griffin, he ends up going to Penn State. But James Smith, a Juco athlete, comes to Kansas. That is probably the biggest signing we've had of this class, I'd say. Let's go ahead and look at the top classes over here. Where did we end up? We finished pretty darn low. 96, 11 three stars, three two stars, and two one star prospects. 16 total. Um, we didn't have a great class, obviously, but uh, we didn't really get many four stars on our board anyway, so it is what it is. I think that makes the team better overall, though. Um, we actually had some pretty big gems in that class. Let's see what it comes to when it comes to position changes. I'm not sure what the athletes we brought in were actually um, best suited to play. So we'll see what all these position changes are. So Maurice Butler, he actually comes in and might start day one. Let me know if you guys think he should start day one. Jason Bean played all year last year. He's going to get better, obviously. We haven't had progression yet. But, I mean, if he's mu that much better as a freshman, I really don't see the point in going seniority. Unless you guys say we should redshirt uh, Maurice Butler and then just hold him for next year. Obviously, running back position, we're good. Um, let's see where this athlete's best at. So he's a junior. He's a really good running back. He's a really good receiver. Other than that, he is pretty bad all around. He could be a decent safety, but he's already a cornerback. And hey... James Smith, welcome to being our best receiver. That's a big get right there. He's a junior already because he's from junior college. But at 82 overall, that's a big get there for us. I don't think anybody else really needs to change um, positions. I don't think any of these guys would be able to get too much playing time elsewhere if we change their positions. Um, we'll go over here to fullback. Yeah, I don't think too many of these guys are that great. Might be able to sneak in one of these. Um, yeah, maybe Will Huggins at fullback would be best. Um, that way we have a decent player there. Offensive line is looking fairly weak. We might even bring... Um, have to try our centers at other positions because it's just not a strong uh, group of players there right guard like maybe he could go over there and play left guard if we really needed him to um, right tackle as well we'll actually probably move this guy to left tackle just because it's a weaker position um, defensive end like the offensive line is going to be a tough area patrick white 67 overall we'll actually probably caleb taylor will probably be our new starting left end and then we'll have these guys over here. Defensive tackle. I know Keenan, or Keenan, however you would pronounce that. Um, he played decent in the time that he got, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with him being the starter there. Um, we don't have too many options at linebacker. Nick Channel, you actually, let's see if you can go over there. Well, before we do that, yeah, we don't have too much when it comes to starters at the linebacker position, so I think we're gonna run with this for now. Backup will be there at the left outside linebacker instead of the right outside linebacker. Um, cornerback position, 
pretty bad still deuce mayberry leads that section at a uh, 77 overall this is before progression as well so you got to take that into account um, we did bring in two free safeties it looks like oh no he was red shirted last year so we've got a Junquai Lewis that's gonna be a fun name to say all season long um, he's a 71 overall shouldn't be too bad Kenny Logan jr. returns for his senior year 82 overall Edwin White Schultz 72 and Jason Gilliam will actually be fairly decent for us I wonder if we could actually put Edwin White Schultz over there now he drops too much um, so that's upsetting Jacob Borsia obviously will return as the kicker and I think that's all the position changes we need to make um, big get there when we got that receiver that we're uh, is instantly going to be one of our top receivers see what we get whenever we go to here to progressions i'm excited to see what a guy like stephen mcbride or luke grimm can do um they uh they they could jump pretty high let's see what happens this could determine the starting quarterback position so mike Nowitzki already a 95 yeah jason bean's gonna jump up to a 76 overall so he's gonna be tied with maurice butler and um gonna be a 76 overall there we've got conrad holly right there jumping up to a 74 he was a freshman that we redshirted last year so i'm interested to see what he does there he could compete for that quarterback position um and then ben easters 71 overall so uh, overall, our quarterbacks have jumped up better than expected, if I say. Um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Jason Bean might come in his senior year and uh, be able to compete for the starting job as he should. Velton Gardner all the way up to an 85 for his final year. I was hoping maybe he'd get a little closer to 90. And we've got Devin Neal already at an 80. Um, like I said, this running back group is absolutely nasty. Daniel Hishaw Jr., sophomore, 79, and Amari Pesic Hickson, 78 overall sophomore. Um, progression is looking fairly good for us. Will Huggins goes up five. And Luke Grimm, he makes a massive leap there. 85 overall now, our best receiver. Um, he jumps up five Trevor Wilson goes up four and Stephen McBride goes up five so we've got to remember we made a promise to Stephen McBride that he'd be able to get a good bit of catches this year so I'm happy um, that he's back but we also need to actually play him Majik Rector is a freshman speedster too though he's got a 90 speed 90 acceleration so I think we'll be able to get him uh, involved in the offense pretty easily um, tight ends Trevor Cardell actually jumps Mason Fairchild. So we've got a new starting tight end around here. Trevor Cardell did have a few plays um, last year, a few shinier, shining moments last year that uh, looked like he could be a great player within this offense. Our offensive line does take a nice upgrade there when it comes to progression along with the defensive line. Steven Parker, let's go. Up to an 82 overall. That's a big get for us. 79 overall for Caldwell. That's big too. Rich Miller, 5. Krishan Brown up 6. Got a lot of guys jumping here. Gavin Potter coming off of an amazing year. He even goes up 5. So that's a big, big uh, progression right there for us. You've got Taiwan Berryhill up 4 there. Staying undoubtedly the starting right outside linebacker. Coming over to the cornerbacks, you've got Deuce Mayberry going up six, along with Jacoby Bryant, Romello Dotson, and Donovan Gaines. So this team's looking a lot better than they were looking going into the offseason. Kenny Logan Jr. goes up five, all the way to an 87. Kicking wise, Borsia goes up five, and Reese Vernon goes up six. So I'm interested to see how all of this factors into our season because I think we honestly got better even with a poor recruiting class I guess you could say uh, in my opinion we got a lot better than uh, than we were last year so 
that's an interesting thing. Who do you guys think took the most important jump? In my opinion, I think it's got to be Luke Grimm or one of the receivers, but uh, it could be a defensive guy. I think um, if you go down here, you look at a guy like Stephen Parker. He went up five. Um, Keenan Caldwell up six. Those are some big jumps right there. And uh, while they might not be on the flashier positions, I think even though um, they're lower overalls with those jumps, they'll be able to have a pretty good contribution with our defense or offense. Um, cutting players, we shouldn't have to do that, I don't think. I think our roster should be under the, yeah, we're under the limit, so we don't have to cut anybody. Um, so that's a good thing to see. Custom conferences, I think we're going to leave everything the same. Maybe take BYU out of the Big 12. Gave them a season to see how they do, and they obviously couldn't handle it. Um, so that's unfortunate for them, but I mean... I don't know if they deserve to be in the conference anyways. Didn't really think they would do that bad when I put them in there. I was just thinking, hey, why not give them a conference since they've never had one? But obviously they weren't ready for it. So uh, do you guys think I should take them out of the conference? Let me know. If I did, I think I'd switch them out for a team like Houston, maybe. Somebody like that. Maybe uh, SMU. Um, any, I'm open to any suggestions. Um, you now have the ability to reset your coach's skill trees. I'm good. Um, I'm trying to build up all of those uh, scouting attributes. And uh, yeah, Big 12. We do need to add another team, actually. So if we if we take BYU out, uh, we still wouldn't have a conference championship. So where is where is Houston at technically? I think they'd be in the American. Yeah, Houston's in the American, as well as Rutgers. Maybe I forgot to put Rutgers in the Big Ten. I sure, yeah, I did. Uh, we'll move them over to the Big Ten where they're supposed to be. Or, nah, we'll, we'll just keep them in there because they're, it's, it's Rutgers. Um, so let's, let's see if we can actually put, we'll put Houston over here into the Big 12. And then we'll give you guys BYU. I think that's a fair trade. BYU can go into the American Conference. And then, since we're a little stingy, we'll take... Uh, where are they at? SMU. I think they'd fit in the Big 12. So this is what... The lineup's looking like I don't like that every ranked team is over here. So we'll go and give you guys Iowa State and Texas Tech. And I think this is a good conference. We finally get to have a championship game. Um, we've got two better teams now in Houston and Southern Methodist uh, University. I think that's a pretty good conference. What do you guys think about that? Uh, is it maybe a little too much? I could see how uh, maybe if it was a little overpowered here, making the Big 12 too good. Um, because historically, they haven't been the greatest conference. But I, I, think that's a, I think that's a fairly evenly spread conference. Um, obviously, the American Conference gets a lot worse with that. But, I mean, what can you really expect out of that? They've got two ranked teams on both sides. I think they'll be all right with that movement. Unfortunately, you can't get rid of conferences. I would love to put like a, you know, yeah, it won't let you. I would love to put Notre Dame into a conference and just get rid of independence altogether, but you can't do that. Um, this game was a little old for that, I guess. So unfortunately, they'll be forever independent. Um. I think I'm going to go with this. I think this is a fairly even conference. We get to play a few different teams next year. And uh, we'll go ahead and go into the preseason now. And uh, hopefully see if we've got some nice scouting. We're going to be ending the live after the preseason, I believe. So we're just about to hit the hour mark. Thank you, everybody, for joining me through this. We've still got a little bit more to go. But I just want to go ahead and thank you guys for that. Um, we're close to 200 subs 
thank you guys so much for all that support um really shows me that it's worth making uh these videos and actually putting them out there um, so as far as red shirting goes i just don't know what we should do here maurice butler is a freshman and he's our best overall quarterback um, I got App State and Charlotte through a team builder. You can the rosters I think will be a few years old, but I figured I wouldn't really notice considering they're um, they're Power Five schools or a group of Power Five schools. So um, if you just go into the team builder, you can download. I think the or latest their rosters will be or earliest they'd be is like 2016. So I just had to play with the older rosters, but I didn't really notice it too much. Um, and then once you start the dynasty, you just are able to do the team builder. Um, so yeah, that's how you get those teams in there. Um, we'll come back to this. You guys let me know in the chat. Uh, what should we do here? Maurice Butler is a freshman. He's the best overall quarterback. But do, I mean, Jason Bean played great last year for us down the stretch in some games. He had his moments, but it's not like his accuracy... And no problem. Um, it's not like his accuracy and all that is too bad. I mean, he's worse by a good bit. He's actually a worse thrower than Conrad Holly. We'll come back to this, but like I said, let me know what you guys think we should do there. Um, Belt and Gardner. Yeah, let's redshirt our best running back. That makes sense. We're going to go down here and we're going to redshirt Phil Holmes um, because he's not going to see the field. We'll red shirt this guy. He's not going to see the field unless there's an injury. Uh, Donnell Harris was our big get at receiver last year. We're going to red shirt him. Um, hopefully he can play good for us because I, I'm looking forward to big things from him. I basically just go through and red shirt um, all of the freshmen and uh, just see how they're the positions play out with their red shirts yeah our quarterback room is pretty bad overall still like you said nades um we don't have even if we play maurice butler it's not like we're going to be a championship team i probably will in end up red shirting him and if we need him at any point or if like we're just doing really bad and uh we want him to uh be able to uh get some playing time you really can just put him in at any time and get rid of his red shirt. Yeah, our receivers are all juniors too. Um, so they'd be able to progress a little more. I think I think that's the right move. We'll red shirt Maurice Butler. And we'll have Jason Bean and Conrad Hawley play it out for the um, starting job. Conrad Hawley is a worse uh, athlete. He's terrible when it comes to running and stuff. But his accuracy and throwing power was better or his throwing power is the same but his accuracy is a lot better than uh jason bean so we might have to end up oh we got twins on the team conrad halley and uh ben easters both look exactly the same um so yeah we'll probably end up, end up red shirting maurice butler i think that's the right move uh like you said um it'd be kind of dumb to waste his first year if we're not going to be playing for anything too big uh, we'll just go through and get some of these freshmen in red shirt, the guys that uh, won't see the field. Like this guy, Brad Duckett, will probably never see the field in four years, if I'm going to be honest. I hope he never sees the field in four years, is what I should say. Um, we've got a few red shirt, or a few freshmen. Justin Ralph, I don't even know how you got on the team. Kelly Skinner, and uh, we'll just go through, red shirt all those guys, and that should be that. Pretty close to being able to go into our second season. We'll, let's go to get into the schedule now. Um, they're recommending we play Duke, Central Michigan, Akron, and uh, that's all of the non-conference games. I'm absolutely just going to get rid of all of those because I don't really like those games. Um, let's see. We'll open up all these. Let's go to week one. I want to start the season out with a challenge, but nothing too crazy. I don't think Duke is where we want to go. Um, we could start a rivalry or try to start a rivalry with a team like Rice or Charlotte and just see who gets better. Um, or we could bring back the Kansas-Nebraska game. I mean, that's always been a bit of a rivalry. Let's 
see if we've got anything other than that on here that's too interesting. I think I like that. We'll try to take on Nebraska there in week one. We'll go to Nebraska. That should be an interesting matchup. We'll have a bye week. Then we hit up Mich Central Michigan will be a bye week, right? Or won't be on the schedule. We'll go down here. We'll hit up Charlotte again. We'll hit up Charlotte because we played them this last year. And then, can we find Missouri maybe? Is Missouri on there? Okay, I think I went or let go of it too early. And we could go with Missouri. Try to get that rivalry revitalized. That'll give us 12 games. Um, an A minus strength of schedule. So we've got Nebraska, who's going to be ranked week one. We got a bye week. Then we got Charlotte and Missouri. Bye week again. We get into conference play and we play all eight of those games straight. Houston, West Virginia, Oklahoma, SMU, TCU, Texas, Kansas, Texas Tech. And we round off with Kansas State. Um, don't know, I don't know how, but we actually didn't end up playing Kansas State this year, so or this past season. So I'm sorry for anybody that was looking forward to that. And um, I wonder if we could maybe even get this at a neutral location. I don't think they have too many. Let's see if they have the rivalry game up here. I don't. I highly doubt they do. But I mean, it'd be interesting. Uh, no, they don't really have it at anything too close to us. We could try playing it at a like a um, in Illinois or something. It's not really too close. Uh, I think we'll probably just leave it where it's at. Yeah, we, I mean it wouldn't make sense for us to play in Texas. Um, we'll play this one at home. Let Missouri come to us for this first year. We'll play Charlotte at home and we'll play. Um, Nebraska away. I think that's a fair trade-off there. We only get three non-conference games this year. And now, I'm pretty much going to be wrapping it up. Let's get into the recruiting. Um, I'm not going to recreate any recruits. I didn't make any last year. If you guys would be interested to um, get your names on the recruits in future seasons, I'd be more than happy to... Uh, make that a little bit of a feature for my subscribers so let me know if that's something that you guys would think would be cool or i mean just kind of meh um, i'm open to any ideas we might have a lot of needs here though so we do have a few needs we've got four at the moment um, we'll go to middle linebacker first because that seems to be the most important we're going to need two of those um, i like to add the guys that are really interested in us and then the guys that are um, not really locked too much. We, we gotta add some better players overall wise this year. Um, Demario Dahl, we'll bring him in. Um, that was only four I think. I'm actually gonna go back in and uh, bring uh, in somebody from the state of Kansas. I think that'd be a good idea to keep our pipeline going in there. Yeah. Chris Mosley works for me. Add a couple of those guys. We'll scout them later or later whenever we get done adding players and see what they are like or what their overalls are like. Hopefully we don't get too many busts. A lot of times those 81 overalls end up being bust. Um, got a good bit of interest here at the guard position. I can't lie. We'll take, I don't really want one stars anymore, but we'll take it for now. Um, just to see what they're like. Go to tight end now um, to round out the recruiting right now. We've got two guys here. Not really worth it for either of them in my opinion. Um, anybody that's pretty good that's not even close to lock. Um, this guy's 6'3 at tight end position. I want to find... Here we go. That's the type of thing I'm looking for. Anthony Raw, 6'7", 272. Um, we'll go down and see if we can find any very or any other very athletic people. It didn't really look like there was too many um, crazy athletes there. Outside linebacker, we only need one of those, so um, I'm interested to see if we can maybe get a first four-star interest. No, we get a one-star. 
one star, two star, and a three star. Uh, so we're gonna have to build this one from scratch. We'll just add a, a couple of these guys. Um, this guy's from Texas. So let's go to states near us or the state we're in. Um, nobody really good there. Maybe a state near us like Missouri. Nothing good there. Um, Nebraska would be closer. Oklahoma maybe. They've got some people. We'll actually just add them there. Now before we add the rest of our recruiting board, let's go over here and scout and see what we've got. So uh, first off, tight end wise, we've got Kevin Johnson. Can't remember which one was the really tall. So it was Ryan Hart that was the massive guy. Oh, Anthony Rawls and Ryan Hart were six seven each. Um, so Kevin Johnson instantly jumps up. We've got Ryan Hart staying the same essentially, and Anthony Rawls is gonna end up being a bust. So that's a that's a little unfortunate there. I was kind of hoping he'd be a at least above average. Um, you got Franklin Holmes at the guard position. We actually lead there. Let's pray for Jim. He goes down. Of course he does. Can't get anything good here. Everybody's going down. Nothing good there at that guard position. I mean, Franklin Holmes would still be able to hold it down himself. He probably wouldn't start year one, I would hope. Um, so, can't be too scared of that. Come on, we need Calvin Lane to stay up there. Unfortunately, he's going to drop pretty bad. But hey, Ross rushing. I don't think we're really in there for him too much. He's out of Oklahoma, though, so that should be a pipeline. Um, he jumps up six there. Cedric Baldwin is going to go up one. Jerry Rollins. We are probably going to be able to fight for him considering we got him this early on. Um, but hey. 79 overall. It might have dropped, but you'll take something like that. You've got Ricky Moore drop into a 75. Demario Dahl hits a big hit there. And Chris Mosley is going to go down by one. So, overall, not the greatest we could have got, but it could have been much worse. We'll just go in and see who all is interested in us as a team now. Um, not really care about their positions. Let's see. We have a four-star quarterback. Kevin Weeks, a scrambler out of Colby, Kansas. That's a big uh, big interest there. Hopefully he doesn't. I feel like he's probably going to drop. We don't need that many receivers to come in. Um, let's see what all we've got. We'll go by position here. Uh, we do have a lot of quarterbacks interested in attending here. We did get... Um, Maurice Butler so obviously the quarterback room is good but hey you can never have too many good quarterbacks uh, running back wise no interest there um, receiver wise we've got a few guys that it looked like they could be somewhat decent um, other than that nothing too crazy we'll add a couple of linemen just to see how they end up doing um, centers uh, we'll, we'll add this guy since we're up there doesn't look like he's going to be too good. Defensive ends. Hey, we're second on a four-star there in Brian Wise, so that'd be a big get for us. Um, Corey Perez. We've got a few interesting prospects we could go after here. Obviously, no four-stars are really all that interested in us just yet. Uh, we are coming off of a five and seven season. But hey, wrapping it up here. Overall, this isn't that, too, that bad of a class. And... That's a big get there. We've got two athletes, a five-star and a four-star, that are, have us as their top in their top three. I'm going to be interested to see how they end up. First off, though, fingers crossed. Predictions down below. What do you guys think Kevin Weeks is going to turn to? With our luck we've had, I'm going to say he drops to a 68. Oh, that was right. <laughs> And man, that's that's unfortunate. Oh man, that's unfortunate. We'll go ahead and scout these guys. He does drop, but still 74 overall is very good. And hey, Dustin Newberry. Top three for him already, I believe. He's going to be a big get there if we're able to convince him to join us. And uh, that's going to wrap up our live stream. This first off season, we could have done a lot better than we did. We could have done a lot worse than we did, in my opinion. 
Uh, we had a very successful um, recruiting class considering where we started. Um, we do have an upgrade here that I'll do real quick. I think we can get, yeah, we can get another 500 on the first seven weeks, so that should be a good idea to go after that. Let me know what you guys think about this first offseason. I had a blast doing the live stream format. Um, I'll probably keep it to when we do off-season off live streams. Maybe if we get to like a um, really interesting rivalry matchup, um, then maybe I'd do that as a live stream if you guys would be interested in that type of thing. Um, I'd say this every video, but follow me on Instagram if you really want to um, stay in tune with my videos and my uploads and stuff. Um, that's where I, I'm most active on Instagram. I do have other social media. They're always, uh, the links are always in the description down below. Um, voice crack there. But uh, that's my most active one. I post every time I post a video. Um, so yeah, follow my Instagram. Link's in the description down below. Thank you guys for joining me in this first off season of the Kansas Jayhawks Dynasty. Got a idea of what I want to do for this next season, but hopefully we can... Uh, at least make a bowl game. I want to go for that six win, seven win mark. Um, let me know. Give me any of your guys' predictions. Um, I'm always open to be messaged on Instagram or on Twitter or something like that. Thank you guys for joining me on this live stream, and I'll see you guys next time. I'm going to go ahead and end it there. And um, once again, peace out, everybody.